The federal government and state governors recently disagreed on who is to blame for the high rate of poverty in Nigeria. Of course, in a blame game, objectivity is usually defenestrated. No party is willing to self-reflect and admit to the part they played in whatever it is they are accusing the other party of. So, the back and forth between the federal government and governors started last week when the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clement Agba, said governors should be held responsible for the rising levels of poverty we have in Nigeria. That came on the heels of the recent figures released by the National Bureau of Statistics that 133 million Nigerians now live in poverty. If you run the math on that, it means that 66.5% of the total population now lives in poverty. Clement Agba said that state governors have gotten their priorities wrong. Instead of improving their people's standard of living, Clement argued that their stock in trade is to invest in infrastructure in capital cities, which usually comes at the neglect of rural areas. The Nigerian Governors Forum gave an excurating response to the federal government. The governors accused the federal government of abandoning its primary responsibility of providing security to the people. They claimed that the federal government has also failed to fulfill its promise of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. So really, if anyone were to blame, that would be the federal government, they argued. To start with, I find it suspect that the Buari government is coming up with this excuse in its twilight days. I mean, this is a very convenient excuse for the federal government to make to absorb itself of any responsibility and it plays to the pathological blame shifting this government is notorious for. In almost eight years, this government has blamed the PDP and Nigerians for its own failures. It's interesting to see that state governors have now been added to the list. It is an oversimplification for the federal government to blame rising poverty levels on governors. This is not to absolve governors of the parts they play in the mess we have today in Nigeria, but more on that later. The real issue here is that our federal structure has a lot of fault lines. There is so much power and responsibility the constitution confers on the federal government. It is then disingenuous of the federal government which enjoys all these powers and responsibilities to blame governors alone. The way Nigeria is designed, states cannot survive without statutory allocations from the federal government. In fact, many governors cannot pay salaries to civil servants in the state without running to Abuja every month. It could interest you to know that the federal government rakes in up to 51% of our total revenue, while almost 25% goes to all 36 states and 23% goes to all 774 local government areas. You cannot take so much to yourself and outsource responsibility. I should also add that the constitution grants the control and management of all natural resources and hydrocarbon operations to the federal government. So essentially, our federal structure is not designed to make state and local government areas thrive and flourish. It's designed to make them appendages to the federal government. With regards to the points the governors raised on insecurity, the federal government is 100% to blame. Again, going back to Nigeria's federal makeup, the constitution does not grant states and local governments powers to create their own police department. That means the security of life and property is exclusively the job of the federal government. Regional security outfits like Amotekun and Ibu Biagu are at best vigilante organizations. They don't have real powers compared to the police. They don't even have the right to bear arms. I remember how antagonistic the federal government was to the creation of Amotekun. It's really interesting how the federal government wants all the spotlight but aids taking responsibility. What we have is a case of the federal government biting way more than it can chew. 
now let's talk about state governors for a minute it is also an oversimplification on their part to blame the federal government alone for rising poverty levels in a country i get that they probably felt insulted by the comments made by clement agra but let's be real state governors are not different from the federal government the same way they depend on the federal government is the same way local governments depend on them local governments in nigeria do not have any autonomy but nigeria is supposed to be a three-tier federal system isn't that funny during sunday's arise news town hall meeting article said one of the reforms he engineered when he was vice president was to grant financial autonomy to local governments by paying their monthly allocation directly into their accounts until then governors were the ones collecting the monthly revenue for local governments from the federal government but the reform only lasted some nine months before governors ran to Asso Rock complaining that it wasn't constitutional that the local government gets paid their monthly allocation directly from the federal government. In 2019, Buhari also attempted to do the same thing but it was met with stiff opposition from state governors. This cute system has robbed local governments their autonomy and turned them into appendages to governors. You can't tell me it isn't greed for these governors to feel entitled to what rightfully belongs to local governments. Also, being a governor in Nigeria means you are the alpha and omega in your state. No one can question you. You get to travel wherever and whenever you want. A case in point is the disaffected G5 PDP governors who over the past few months have been spotted traveling to various places in and out of Nigeria, usually styled in similar outfits. I'll do you one better. Buni, the governor of Yobe State, once said that he spends three days a month in the state. Now, do you honestly think those people are capable of self-reflection? Do you think these are the people who feel much responsibility towards lifting their people out of poverty? It's interesting to see how much finger pointing exists in our polity, but they never own up to the individual parts they contributed to the ruination we have today. But how are we ever to fix our many problems when no one is ready to take accountability? I'll leave you without thoughts as I end this video. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share your comments below. I'll see you guys in the next one.